brotherly love. That the love between us as believers is strong enough to attract sinners to come to Christ. And I told us that as Christians, we should walk in love. Now, we should make up our minds that we will walk in love. We held on to the scripture where God's word says, let brotherly love continue. Now, for the scripture to say, let brotherly love continue, it means that brotherly love, we have some obstructions. There will be things that, we want, you know, there, are, there will be natures that people will put up capable of killing brotherly love. But for the scripture to say, let it continue, it means don't allow it to die. No matter what people have done or are doing to you or will even do to you, make sure that your love for the body of Christ, for your fellow Christian, don't die. Now, the one we are looking at today, amen, is how, sorry, yes, how we can attract people to Christ by our level of prosperity, by our prosperity. I wrote it down this way, that today we shall be looking at another dimension. We shall be looking at the prosperity dimension of soul winning. Now what do I call it again? The prosperity dimension of soul winning. And the focus of what I'm really going to talk about today is how when you progress, when you are moving forward, your life will become so attractive that sinners will want to come and join you to serve the God that you serve. We'll be taking it step by step throughout this month. Let's start with Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. We are going to read together in uniform. Zechariah chapter 8. Thank you, it's on screen. After the count of three, can we read it together? One, two, and three. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, In those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, We will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Ten men from every tribe will hold on to the skirt of a Jew, and they will say, Let us go with you. Because we have heard that God is with you. Now, that is what we call the prosperity dimension of soul winning. Now, when you so much prosper in such a way that your life alone attracts people to God. Now, that's what I want to ask us as I continue. I want you to answer me in your heart. Have your life attracted anyone to, to God before? That ah, yes, is very, very sharp, very sound. Where did it come from? Okay. Now, and it must continue. And the ratio here is at least 10. At least 10 people. Now, if you should sit down in church... And there is nobody you can point to that came to church because of you. We should question your Christian life. If I'm, I'm, I'm talking to us, if you do not have at least one or two, but the ratio is 10 here, that we say, I'm here because of this man. His life attracted me. Now, that's why Jesus our Lord said, you are the light of the world, not just the light of your family. 
And that's what we want to talk about. We are going to look at the prosperity dimension today. Now, and in this service, I will show you why you as a Christian should prosper. We are also going to look at what you should do to prosper and where people are missing it. Then we'll pray and take the communion and continue again next week. So, this scripture is clear enough. It doesn't need an interpretation. Now, it means that your life becomes so bright to the point that it's not you that you are calling them now. People are coming to you. Now, me, it has happened to me. I, I, I can talk about it. Has, it has happened to me. In fact, my family, it is happening to us. Now, people, we just, we just love people. We just love you people, the way you are serving God. Can we join you? Now, it was something like this that made Brother Francis, our present Kingsman president, to join our church many years ago. We lived in the same compound. I'm talking about many years ago. It should be over 10 years now. We lived in the same compound. We were living at, at the first floor. They were living at the down floor. Now, they were committed to an orthodox church. Very committed in the orthodox church. But you know, he, he, he drinks beer, he humanizes. But the way me and my wife used to comport ourselves, I didn't know that they were watching. They never, for one reason, came to our flat to say, Pastor, we came to settle you and your wife. They, we didn't know they were watching. Nobody ever came to our, our flat to make any horrible noise. We didn't know they were watching. Until one day, he just came up to our flat and we started talking. And I shared the word of God with him and he said he would like to come to, he, uh, to our church. The only son of the family. And you know what his father said? He said, if he's to follow this pastor, I release you. May you get to that point. In your service to God. Now, I ask a question here. How can we actualize this prophecy? This prophecy that is written by prophet uh, Zachariah. How can we actualize it? Because see, every child of God is supposed to become a light. An attracting light. How can we actualize it? I come again. Every child of God is supposed to be an a light. That will attract people. How can we actualize it? Actualizing it is what I want to tell you today. How can we actualize it? Now, number one I wrote here. We need to awake to the reality, hear me? An understanding of what it means to prosper. What does it actually mean to prosper? Because a lot of us think that prosperity is having much money. And to buy low to Paul to prosper. You can have much money and not prosper. Out, and not be prospering. What does it mean to prosper? We are going to read uh, 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 three scriptures. Uh, th three, I mean, verses. Or four. First Samuel chapter 18. We we'll read verse 5. We we'll read 14 and 15. And we we'll read verse 30. First Samuel chapter 18. Verse 5. Look at this. The Bible says, And David went out whithersoever Saul sent him and behaved wisely. Some of other versions will say, And prospered. And Saul set him over the men of war. And he was accepted in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servant. Now, everywhere he was sent, the Bible says he behaved himself wisely. I will explain something to you. Verse 14 and 15. Verse 14 and verse 15. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. And the Lord was with him. Verse 15. We are hearing the same statement the second time. Wherefore, when Saul saw that he behaved himself very wisely, he was afraid of him. Now verse 30. Verse 30. Then the prince of the Philistines went forth and it came to pass. After they went forth that David behaved himself wisely, more wisely than all the servants of Saul. 
so that his name was much set by. Now, what does it actually mean to prosper? Hallelujah. It is to do well in all you are doing as a child of God. Who is a prosperous child of God? A prosperous child of God is the one that is doing well in what he or she is doing. Are you a fashion designer? You are doing well. Are you a carpenter? You are doing well. Are you uh, into, you know, business? Now, when you do well, your life becomes a positive attraction. Now, it means you are prospering. It's not that you are struggling. You are doing well in what you are doing. Even as a pastor, your life will now become a point of attraction. When people look at you and say, ah, in fact, I just love to do what you are doing. I just want to know the God that you are serving. It takes doing well to get to that point. I wrote here, prosperity does not mean much money. It means that you are doing well. And I often let believers know, if you don't want to prosper because of yourself, please try to prosper because of the name of God attached to you. When people say you are a child of God, prosper because of that name. Make up your mind that people will not through you or because of you mock that name of God that you carry. I remember one many years ago, uh, that was where God used us to win the soul of Brother Francis to church. I and my wife were coming to church one Sunday morning. We didn't have cars at that time, but as we were, we were going, there, uh, there, there's this house that was uh, the third house to our house then. A lady came out, and as we passed, you know what the lady was telling someone? Only, he said it in Yoruba language, but I'll tra translate it. He said, see these people, the beauty of God is showing in their life. She said it in Yoruba. I had it, and I turned. She smiled and dodged. So, if you are thinking, ah, oh, I cannot stress myself, Joe. I don't. See, if you don't have any reason that can make you prosper, prosper because of Jesus. And I will tell you how as we are going on. Hallelujah. Now, and the reason why you must prosper because of him is that he has, he died for you to have salvation so that his name can be attached to yours. Can you imagine you are, you are beating your chest and telling people that I am a child of God and you are not doing well. All of you that are students here, do well in your academics so that you can beat your hand on your chest and I'm a child of God. Then your life becomes a center of attraction. Fellow students will want to come to Jesus because of you. But when you are not doing well, you don't have what we call um, the example that can attract people to Jesus. I, I, I don't mean that you shouldn't teach. You can teach people about Jesus, but see, the best form of evangelism is advertising Jesus in your own life. So that's the first point I want us to see. We need to, 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 we need to awake to the reality and understanding of what it means to prosper. And what does it mean to prosper? It means you are doing well in what you are doing. Second thing I also want us to see, number two. In being able to prosper, hear me, pay more attention to your relationship with the Holy Spirit. If you will prosper. Because a lot of people complain about the economy. A lot of people complain about so many things. But I always say it. We don't prosper by uh, just prospering alone. For the Christian, we have more advantage than the unbelievers. You know why we have more advantage? We have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit of God in us is the one that knows where the realm of success is. The Holy Ghost in us is the one that knows what you need to do to open your next door. That's why, see, if you will prosper and become a point of attraction, listen, you must pay much attention to, the, to your relationship with the Holy Spirit. I wrote here, he is the one that can give us revelation secrets that will make us do well. That's why, see, in your quiet time, maybe you are finished praying in the morning, you are finished studying in the morning, just keep calm in his presence. And maybe more joy, oh, they told me so no. 
Holy Spirit, lead me. What do I need to do that will make my life better than this? I will show you two examples. Now, let's look at the first one. Or I'll show you three. In Isaiah 45, from verse 1. Now, look at this. Isaiah 45, from verse 1. We take it 1 to 3. Isaiah 45, from verse 1 to verse 3. Thus said the Lord to his anointed. Look at this. To who? To Cyrus, whose right hand I, am, I have holding. Now, what does it mean to hold somebody's hands? It means that you are in fellowship with that person. You are in relationship. That person is not far from you or to you. You are in agreement. So, that Cyrus, whose right hand is fellowship. They ask Cyrus, Look at what your relationship with God will do. Now, read on. Whose right hand I have holding? To do what? To subdue nations before him. And I will lose the loins of kings. To open before him the two lived gates. And the gates shall not shut. Wait for me. Verse 3. But look at the benefits that are, are, are fellowship with God that Cyrus enjoy. He says, see, the nations that are standing, I will subdue them. I will make sure that there is no obstacle in front of you. You just be in relationship with me. He said, I will make sure that the gates that is closed is open. You just be in relationship with me. I will make sure that, I will make sure that, you know, nations will be subdued. He now went to verse 2. Verse 2. Because there are secrets you, that you cannot know if God doesn't teach you. And no man has those secrets. Verse 2. God is now saying, in, a, in my relationship with you, Cyrus, I will now go ahead. I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut in, a, in asunder the bars, all these benefits of relationship. But look at the third one, where I'm really going. Now, because of your relationship with God, God is now saying, I will give thee the treasures of darkness. You know what it means? There are treasures, opportunities, breakthroughs, hidden in places that ordinary eyes cannot see. If God doesn't tell you, but, but listen, God will not tell you if you are not his friend. That's why don't joke with your time with God. Now, apart from praying and studying, always learn to be calm before the Spirit of God to listen to things that the Holy Spirit will want to tell you. Then always ask questions. Look at me. I always ask questions. Holy Spirit, teach me what do I need to do now? What do I need to do now? Holy Spirit, please teach me. What do I need to do now? You know, yesterday, God gave us two bouncing babies in our church. Two of our mothers delivered. I was now telling my wife, I said, wow, very good. She said, what happened? I said, the people I want to train, that will be their first practical. They will go and name those children. Now, and how did the idea of training, I was praying, Lord, I was just praying for direction. Lord, what do I do next? Lord, how do I what how, how do I move the ministry to the next level? The secret of what you want is in, is in God's hands. But if you don't pay attention, that's why he calls it. Show me that scripture. We are not here true. He said, I will give you treasures of darkness. Treasures, I will give thee the treasures of darkness. He now talk about and hidden riches of secret places. There are riches in the secret place. He now said that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, I am the God of Israel. Prosperity is not as difficult as so many people think. But the thing is that we like to use common sense more than using spiritual sense. Holy Spirit, please, what is next? What do I do now? How many children of God can be as patient as that? Some of us, we are too hasty for results. We want to respond. We want to react.
Let me show you another one. Genesis 21, verse 15 to 19. Look at the voice, what the voice of God did to this woman's case. Genesis chapter 21, 15 to 19. Genesis 21, 15 to 19. I'm waiting. Genesis 21. Look at this. And the water was spent in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs. Next verse. And she went and sat her da down over against him a good way off. As it were a, a, a bow shot. A bow shot. For she said, let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and went up her voice and wept. She sat down and she was crying. She didn't know what to do. Their water was finished. This is her guy and her baby. But look at what voice the voice of God did. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her, what ailed thee, Hagar? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the Lord where he is. Ashomiwa and Bitowa, come on. Verse 18. Arise, lift the lad, lift up the lad, and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great. No, you have jumped something. Okay, let's see. Verse 19. Let's see verse 19. Are you sure you have not jumped something? And God opened her eyes. Can you see? And God opened her eyes. And she saw a well of water. The baby was crying. She was crying. There's no water anywhere. The water we have is finished. She didn't know what to do next. But God said, Hagar, open your eyes. She was that verse 19. I want to show you something. Open your eyes. And she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the bottle with water. And gave the lad to drink. Now listen. The, one of the reasons why a lot of, the ch of children of God are still struggling today is this. We are not paying attention to the leading of the Holy Spirit. At times, the voice of God can come in the message you are hearing in church. That's why I used to say when service is on, don't sit down with anybody that can be discussing with you. Ask my wife, she will tell you. When I'm going for conference, I focus. Once I get there, I focus. I want my own word. Lord, my own word. Because it takes one word to end struggling. Say here. The voice of God can come from the message. And you'll be shocked that from the message, you just get an instruction that will bring you out of that your present state of finance, present state of progress, that will now take you to the next level. But a lot of people are stranded because they are not paying attention to the leading of the Spirit. The voice of the Holy Spirit can come to you through a book you are reading. That's why I see, don't only listen to a message. Get Christian books, book Books that are very instructive, read them. The voice of God can come in a revelational manner. That's why we have visions, we have trance, we have dream, we have audible voice, and things like that. But see, the, sincerely speaking, a well is beside you. But if God doesn't open your eyes, you can't see it. Look at another scripture. I'll show you two more. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 3, Israel were moving around. They were doing roundabout journey for 40 years. They were just going around. Listen, it was the voice of God that put an end to moving in circles. That's what I'm praying for you. If there's anyone moving in circles right now, the Lord will put an end to it. May God's voice give you direction. Look at what God is saying. He said, You have come past this mountain long enough. Turn you not what? You know, today they inaugurated uh, the tenth uh, uh, house of assembly. No, no, in your state. The tenth uh, house of assembly in your state. And uh, our speaker, De uh, Debo Gunduin, was re inaugurated 
as the new speaker of Oyo State of, of, of Assembly. When they told him to come and speak, he came up, he said, I will be giving my answer from Acts of Apostles chapter 23, verse 21. Hey! I was shocked. And he quoted that scripture. Some of these people are Christians. So. Some of them went into politics by instruction. So. That's why you must, if there's anything you must develop most in your Christian life, it's your ability to hear how God speaks to you. Now, if not that the voice of God came, Israel will have walked around till they die. Why they allow one running and one move? But they were going in circles because they couldn't hear God. Whatever is blocking you from hearing the voice of God, may the Lord remove them from your ways. In the name of Jesus. Take one more scripture for you to know that the voice of God is paramount. Isaiah 48 verse 17. We are looking at how to actualize the prophecy that you shall be a light that will attract you to the world. Number one, I, I talked about the need for you to awake to the reality and understanding of what it means to prosper. Number two, I said you pay attention to your relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit, sorry, so that you can have access to revelation secrets that will make you prosper. Now look at Isaiah 48 verse 17 to show you that the voice of God is paramount. It says, Thus hear the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Look at this. He says, I am the Lord, thy God. With does what? I didn't, I didn't hear you. With does what? Teach thee to profit. Which means he doesn't want you to remain stagnant. To make profit is to make more gain. God is saying, I am the one that can teach you to. But how will you teach you? How will he teach you if you are not paying attention? A lot of us, we have, we have allowed to, so many things to block our relationship with God. He said, I am the one, the Lord God. I teach you to prosper. Just like I was telling the men at the fellowship the voice yesterday. Our men, please wake up. I told them. I said, begin to go beyond, uh, this is what I learned. This is the business, the trade I learned. That's what I would do. I said, go into highway businesses. They were looking at me. I said, there are some business that can never run down. They were looking at me. I said, for instance, water business doesn't run down. You can never see anybody trading what in line of uh, water that we say, I, 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 I have problems. It will never happen. Flower business doesn't run down. Hospitality business doesn't run down. And I told the men, after praying for them and blessing them, I'm trusting God for men that we set up bakeries. I didn't hear your email. Ah. Men that will set up water companies. Imagine, if as big as Nestle food is, they can come back to be selling bottled water. They cut something. God teaches thee to prosper. So give him more time. He said, which leader thee by the way that thou shouldest go? He's the one that teaches that teaches thee. But he can't teach you if you don't have time for him. It's like you employ a lesson teacher for your son or daughter. And uh, anytime the lesson teacher is around, the, your son is saying, I'm busy. I don't have time. If you have nothing to teach him. So, you have to make yourself available for relationship with God. The third lesson I want us to learn, number three, for you to prosper so that your life can attract people to Jesus, take steps on the divine ideas God gives you access to. When God gives you access to divine ideas, take steps towards them. Don't receive an idea from God and just fold your arms. If there's anything God hates in life, can I tell you, God hates waste. Ajiwali is ready. If there's anything God hates in life, he hates waste. That's why if God gives you a divine idea and you didn't do anything about it, he won't give you another one. You know, yesterday, look up, I was coming to church, so I took um, uh, a commercial vehicle 
the commercial means of transportation. So while I was coming, I saw a woman that sells on the junction, on a T junction in our area. She sells egg buns, she sells pop-off, she sells buns and anything flour. See, this woman will sell at least she fries nothing less than a hundred egg buns. You see her and her husband in the morning, the husband has a bike, they sell cement, she helps to lift, I mean when you buy cement, he will use his bike to go and deliver. But before he goes out in the morning, he will help his wife, they'll be frying. You know, they'll be put, putting it. I have been watching. In fact, I've promised myself that I will invite them for the couple's uh, program we'll have in, 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 in July. And I will give them a word. The wife will be mixing. The husband will be helping her to put it on the, into the uh, altar of uh, 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 no, oil on the fire. Sir, before 4 o'clock, she doesn't stop frying in the morning. She, she doesn't stop making and frying the money. She'll be making the one she makes in the morning to finish. And she, she will be frying till three. But listen, by four, not one puff egg buns will be in a show glass. As I was passing, you know what the Holy Spirit said to me? He said, Son, do you know that business is all about the flow of cash? Business is not all about. How big what you sell. As we moved on, he now showed me people that are selling cars that sat down. A car dealer may not sell in one year. He said, people just, some people want to do touch business, but it's not moving. Business that we say business that is flourishing is all about the flow of cash. How does cash flow in and flow out? Do you now know that this woman and her husband, I was coming to church after the Elebu church on Sunday, one Sunday morning. You know what I meant them in? They were in a total Camry. The man is always dead here with, on his bike, helping people to deliver cement. And they greeted me a carosa. I've not told them, but I made up my mind. This couple's dinner of July, I will give them a word. Prosperity is not in the how big your business. I was also passing that yesterday. I told you I was on the commercial means of transport. I saw, saw a woman just rented a shop, and in her shop is all baby things, expensive things, but not one person. She, the, she put this aluminium glass everywhere, touched, but not one person is there. Most of them they close up their shop after one year. If you say you are doing business and you are doing well, if what you are selling does not meet uh, the, uh, the people around you, does not have the need you will still be poor. So, we need to pay attention to the Holy Spirit. For him to tell you what you need to do next for your doors to open. May your doors open in Jesus' name. So, okay, we are still in, we are three now. Take steps. So, when the Holy Spirit gives you these ideas, take steps on the divine ideas God gives you access to. Don't just receive the ideas and leave it. I was listening to one pastor preaching yesterday. Uh, he's a very big, great man of God. Let me not mention his name We're online. And there's a revelation God gave me about something. Look up. I said to myself, that revelation, I will keep it. I will use it to write a book. And I titled the book, Something. I've written it inside my laptop. I was shocked. This man of God was preaching in a conference that was organized just this year. Everything I wrote on my laptop that me I'm saying by the time the book comes out I will write a, rev a divine revelation given to Pastor Prince Willow. this man has he used it he, he, he tore it part by part according to he took the life of something from the beginning sir this was exactly what I've written and I've written this book on my laptop about two years ago you know what God was now telling me he said see when I give you something and you don't use it, I will give it to somebody else. He said, because there are any, everything I give you, there are people that need it. So, God is giving you a music ministry. 
Some of you are saying, I am going to wait until I'm 50. God doesn't waste time. God is giving you a new song. Son, daughter, go publish this song. You are saying, you see, I'm going to keep this song. I'm going to keep this song. I'm going to use this song. I'm going to make an album in the next five years. Anything God wants to, is giving you. And you are saying, I'm going to keep it. Everything God is giving is for somebody. That business idea God is giving you, some people need it at the moment. Don't wait to start big. Start as you have capacity to. Look at when we started cos uh, uh, cosmetics that, those days. It was 10,000 naira that my wife used. She got the goods. In fact, you know what? Uh, cosmetics is one of the most expensive business. She now sat in one big paco shop and we now put space. It's like you put one here. Just like one shop I saw. The woman said she says provision. And the shop was full. But if you look at it, she removed all the bottled water from their packs. You know, the bottled water should be like three cartons. She now arranged it on the shelf. She arranged Coke on the shelf. One, 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 one bottle. The shop is full. But if you count everything there, <laughs> you know that. But thank God, she was courageous enough to step out. God hates waste. Let me preach to your neighbor. Tell him God hates waste. If there's a book idea he's giving you, start writing now. Don't wait to have all the money to publish. Go to the publisher. Let them start. Make an agreement of how you'll be paying bit by bit. Because God hates waste. Look at what he told them after they, 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 uh, they, they finished eating the miracle bread. He said, gather all the fragments, all the pieces. Let nothing waste. Ah, ah. Oba won't buy any multiplier. To buy waste, we have to be in. And to shock, we can get to go to one layer. But it's just to show you the mindset of God. Some of you are wasting time. Just like I told the people that are going to start the uh, Ayego church, I've told them, by December, if you don't get a place, I will send you out of this church. So how are we, how are we going to do it? You will do it. They came here to see me, was it not deep for yesterday, to ask the structure, what kind of place do we want? And I told them, ah, go and look for so-so and so kind of place. Once you find a place, call me, we'll pay. We'll come and inaugurate the church. It must start. take steps on the divine ideas God gives you access to by his spirit God hates waste yesterday too I was studying God showed me three reasons why several Christians are poor let's look at I will summarize with the three reasons that will take the communion three reasons why Christians some Christians are poor not all three reasons why some Christians are poor Number one, ignorance. You believe me, I want you to make sure you need to read me one on him. And if you are ignorant, brother, sister, it's not the fault of God. I decided to start reading the book of Proverbs yesterday. So I and I said I will be making notes. Yesterday I read Proverbs chapter 1. I won't read more than one chapter of Proverbs so I can assimilate very well. When I got to Proverbs 1 5, show me Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5. I want to tell you what I saw. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 5. Thank you. Thank you. The Bible says, A wise man will do what? And do what? And will increase in what? Uh, not here, you know. You know, see where? Your eyes are healed in the name of Jesus. Let's take it again. One, two, let's go. A wise man will what? Hear. And will what? Increase in learning. That's true. A man of understanding will what? Will attain unto wise counsel. Now, if you look at the three, it is not all about hearing. We'll hear. One, learn. Two, pay attention to wise counsel. The Lord said to me, the strength of the wise man is in his ability to to listen. You now said to me yesterday, son, increase your 
ability to listen. Listen more now. The strength of a wise man. A foolish person doesn't listen. But the, what, if you look at a wise man, go and find out. The source of his wisdom is that his ears and heart is always open to learn something. And you can't learn if you don't listen. You know, some people, even if they are not the one talking, they won't sit down. They won't sit down. They just want to talk. But wise people are those that pay more attention to listening. So I wrote it down like that. And I promised myself, I will listen more. I will listen more by reading more books. I will listen more by listening to fathers, more experienced men. So the source of poverty for several Christians is what's, what I call number one again? Ignorance. And how can you eradicate your ignorance? Look for knowledge. Knowledge will not look for you. Do you understand what I'm saying? But the problem with so many Christians is that they are waiting for somebody to come and teach. No, 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 no. Sir, how do you do it, sir? Your marriage is 21 years. Ask questions so that you can learn. There's no magic about this thing. Principle ni. Sir, how do you do it, sir? Your three children are, you know, how do we do it, sir? We met one, one woman that has the color of my son's, uh, she has a son too that has the same color. When we saw him, there was different kind of spot on her face, on the boy's face. She saw him. You know what she just concluded? Ah, I'm going to go to the house. But she didn't know that I want not care Connie. It was a woman that gave us a secret. We gave her to him. The woman just came and saw all the Johnsons that we bought. You know, Johnson soap, Johnson cream. And you know, if you are if you want to show that you are invoked when you have baby, you see that Johnson appears. Mama yeni sherry color te be or she do do a theory. Te ba feki color e ma cool. So, To eradicate ignorance, you need to open your ears. Ask my wife. We have one book at home. But when we're trusting God for food of the womb, every woman. Ask her now. She said, I read every woman like I was a woman. I read every woman to the point that I, 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 I had understanding of ovulation dates. Some of you, you don't know, but you don't want to know. The person that will give you knowledge will not look for you. When we wanted to start the mission school, my mentor's wife just gave an announcement. Uh, uh, my wife came home to tell me that on uh, the Mama Adilaku said she, uh, she wants to teach on how to start a school, and the the training is ten thousand naira per head. We had that time, I think eleven thousand in, bo in both of our accounts. We empty both accounts. I told my wife. That's why I thank God for her. She pushes me to succeed and I push her to succeed. We took the money we went to pay. When she came back, she made notes. You know, we had PT at the level school today. When I saw parents sat down and we're talking, they were giving us comments about the school. Ah, the head of VIO in your state. We have the son was seated. You know, several personalities. And I saw myself. Papa, I thought, what if 
we didn't go to Mommy Adelaku to go and learn. There are several things you are praying about that the answer is inside the book. Okay, have we forgotten? Have we forgotten? When uh, we invited Dr. Lamitoe, the owner of uh, Ibado Central Hospital, and uh, what's the name of the hotel again? Academic Suits. He told us, I don't usually forget his message. He said, when he wanted to go into hospitality, that's establishing hotel, he said, I bought 25 books because I wanted to know how to run an hotel that there will be power supply for 24 hours. He said, and from the 25 books, I discovered that it is not possible to run an hotel of 24 hours electricity with rooms that are less than 24. Abi? 20, 20 rooms. That if it is less than 20 rooms, you can't you can't run it 24 hours electricity. It will be out of out of shortage. You will you will stop. He says so. He decided to build academic suits. It has about 20 something rooms. I did not stay running it, sir. Put in lady 40 rooms by. Okay. So ignorance is number one. Cousin, contain me your king cow. I know the function of the kidneys. I've read it. Liver, I've read it. So, one, number one reason why so many Christians are poor, what? Ignorance. Number two is laziness. A lot of Christians are poor because they are lazy. Some people cannot stretch themselves. And see, if you choose the ordinary life, oh, let me care. If you choose to live the ordinary life, that you want to wake up and everybody's waking up, you want to eat how many times everybody's eating, you want to sleep when everybody's sleeping, you want to wake up, it doesn't work that way. There are times you decide not to eat three square meals, not because you don't have money, but because you have a goal you are pursuing, you want to achieve. That we have, we have a goal, I have a target. But some people are too, they are too lazy. They can't pursue anything. There are times you decide not to buy clothes, not because you don't have clothes, money to buy. But because you don't want to be lazy. You need to stretch. Me, I used to call lazy people those that cannot stretch themselves. I want to man something called Tobati Leju or Gedelo. I want King Je. I want to make care. 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 Stretch yourself. Stop saying, eh, hey, you see, you know, I did my kind of person. You, you, who are you? Stretch that sometimes you stretch yourself to get certain things done. To so break that uh, 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 cycle of laziness. You know, and that's the problem with so many churches too. When Bishop Oedeko sacked over 1,000 pastors for non-performance, a lot of people, people came to the media. Why should he sack in the church of God? He came up. He said, these people are not productive. That when you were chosen, go and make profit. And he told them from the Bible. The man that was given two talent, one talent, he didn't make profit. And the master took it, took it away from him. Stretch yourself. So if you think it is easy for us to get to this point, go easy, oh. I'm okay. We reach reach our own lower. Elumi wa church lati wa don paso. Fin kanda don paso. So ti paso bag bono. How can yaro lo ripu pit? I de be sin da tole no. Imagine kaje kwa wa ncho kwa maso ke mo don agara olo la la paso. I shan't hear for ye. It's a shame. Stretch yourself. My deacon told me as we finish service on Sunday at the Alebu Church. He said, Papa, I said, What's that? He says, like, I'm going to give towards this thing you are doing. I smiled. He said, It's working, oh. People are coming to church, yo. It's working, oh. I said, it will work. When I started it, I told you it will work. Stretch yourself. Let me preach to your neighbor. Tell him, stretch yourself. 
Some of you, you are reading American books. That's what is making you lazy. They say over there, one, a doctor attend to one, one patient a day. Is it what that one patient will pay in America, they will pay in Nigeria? No, no, this is here. Okay. One, one patient a day in Nigeria, you are overworking. In Nigeria, a doctor can see 100 patients. Ah, time to love. The last reason, third reason why several Christians are poor stubbornness. Who is a stubborn person? A stubborn person is the person that knows what is right but refuses to do it. Some Christians are poor because they are just too stubborn. See, don't live your life like that. Try an error. If you get, if you have access to somebody that can counsel you and show you the way, follow it. Don't be stubborn. You know what God said to Israel? He said you are you are too stiff-necked, stubborn people. That's why they die severally in the wilderness. Some are not ignorant. Too. Some are not lazy, but they are just stubborn. They just they choose not to. Oh, I can't can't keep myself. They are not lazy, but no, I won't I won't I won't I won't, I won't, I won't follow this path. That's the reason why some Christians are poor. But you decide not to be. Did you hear me? Decide not to be stubborn. Decide that you will do what is expected of you. You know, some of you, you, do, you just see members in church on Sunday. You don't know what we do. I'm a calling. Hello? Where are you? What happened? We didn't see you in church. Yes, the intercessory we do conduct prayer on Friday. But if we leave it to, and what he pray in your Friday, you won't see anybody. But we go extra mile. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, is that what you are going through? Okay, don't worry. The Lord will intervene. You now see them in church on Sunday. The summary of everything I've taught you today is for one purpose. Let's go back to that scripture that we started with. Zechariah chapter 8 and verse 23. God wants you to prosper so that your life can attract people to him. Zechariah chapter 8 verse 23. Look at the screen. Let's read it together. We read it, we, we read it at the beginning. We are going to read it again to summarize. One, two, and let's go. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall take hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. This is where God wants us to get to, in blessing. Let people come to Jesus because they see that you are prospering. And you tell them that I'm a child of God. This is where God wants us to get to. And that's why I've taught you that you must prosper as a child of God. And I've taught you what prosperity is, doing well. I've taught you what it takes to prosper. Make sure your relationship with the Holy Spirit is cordial so I can have access to revelation. I told you another one that you must not allow waste of information. When God gives you an idea, make use of it. And I told you that you must kill these three. Kill ignorance, kill laziness, kill stubbornness. Have you learned something? Are you sure? So we are going to take the wine and it's fleshed. <laughs>